now Pastor Tony has a message for us that I hope we receive with joy. Connecting with God. God is our source. He is our light. Now, I'm going to use an illustration here with this electric light. In order for that light to light up, we need to connect it to the power source. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Got it plugged in. But I have no light. People sometimes think that just by being plugged in and going to church, they're connected with God. We've made the connection. But as on a light, besides that connection, there is what we call an open and close or an on and off. Open and close. So if I open the switch, I now have the light. Just like when we are in church or we are reading the Bible. <clears throat> We're plugging in, but have we truly connected? Mm -hmm. Have we opened our hearts to receive that source, that power, and that light from God? Because when we close, we're in darkness. Mm -hmm. And darkness is where things can go wrong. But when we open our hearts and minds to the source, we are connected. In Isaiah 59 and verse 2, the Bible tells us that we are separated from God because of our sins. That's when we're in the darkness. So if we are separated from God, how do we connect to God? That is the question that I will answer today. I hear younger folks say, Hey, you want to hook up? Heard that, right? You want to hook up? Well, connecting with God is hooking up with God. God does want to connect with you. Connecting with God is not about religion or going to church or performing repetitious reciting of the same prayer over and over. Talking to God in prayer is the best way to connect with him. He is your best friend. By seeking him out, when we need to make those difficult decisions in life, we have to go to the bottom line. We have to connect with God. It's all about our relationship where he can help us with those decisions. Walking and talking with the God who created you. He knows about you. Do you know about him? Mm -hmm. Have you made that true and complete connection with God? If not, or even if you have, this message is just the thing you need to hear. I'm going to talk to you about getting connected to God through prayer, and most importantly, how to stay connected and live connected with God. God is perfect, powerful, and yet personal. And that means he desires to have that relationship with you. Isn't it incredible to think that God, who created everything in this world, wants to connect from you? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah? Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 I, I think that sometimes we have begun to be cavalier amen. and casual about God. Yeah. And sometimes we don't take the time to really think about how incredible he really is. You know... If God wanted to, he could use such a grand display in the skies of this world that there would be no doubt of his existence and everybody would believe. Even the most die-hearted atheist 
God made some displays in the sky and appeared to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's up there. Yeah, he's up there. He could do this, but he does not. Hmm. Why not? Because he requires us to have faith. Yeah. And sometimes he tests our faith. Mm -hmm. Mine's been tested. Yeah. And I'm sure your faith has all been tested from yeah. time to time. We're constantly going through mm -hmm. that test. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 34, excuse me, 32, 4, mm -hmm. he, God, is the rock. Mm -hmm. His works are perfect. Yes. Amen. And all his ways are just. Yes. A faithful God who does no wrong. Hallelujah. Upright and just is he. Yes. Also, we find in Isaiah another scripture that says, God created the heavens and the earth and put everything in its place. He made the world to live in and not be an empty chaos. Yes. God created the world, yes, which did. reflects his magnificent power. He created the earth and all its beauty. He created a perfect balance of everything in the world. It's a balance. The beauty in nature is expressed in the creativity of God. He could have made the world dull, black, white, or gray. He could have made foods with no taste. He could have created one note in music. Instead, our music has scale has 12 notes and many different pitches and frequencies. Just think of a world without color, without taste, or without beautiful music. Now how dull would that be? Hmm. Yeah. It'd be very dull. Yes. I haven't even talked about those exquisite flowers and trees or the beautiful animals and the majestic mountains or the beauty of a sunset yet. Hmm. Why did God decide to create all the beauty we see in this world? Yeah. He did it for us. Yeah, yes, he did. He did it for us. Mm -hmm. Anyone who loves nature cannot deny mm -hmm. that there is a God. Mm -hmm. When I'm out in my yard and I'm doing yard work and gardening, mm -hmm. it, it, it <laughs> makes me realize his power mm -hmm. and everything that he does as I'm planting the garden. I see the little seeds growing. Mm -hmm. Yes. He does all of that mm -hmm. for us. In Romans, mm. chapter 1 and verse 20, for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything that God created, they can clearly see his mm. invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes. Now, are you ready for the best news? Are you ready for the best uh -huh. news? Uh, yes. When you are connected to God, you will have eternal life. Yes. Did you receive Christ into your life? The only way to connect with God is through Jesus. He provided a way. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is there for us. God made that promise. And that promise that is found. That promise we can find in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in 
and eat with that person. Yeah. And they with me. Have you heard the knock? Yes. Did you answer the door? Yes. Yes. Just where Christ is right now, where is he with you? Where is he with a relationship with you? Oftentimes he's knocking. Sometimes we don't want to hear that knock. We choose not to answer the door. When he knocks, we have to open. He wants to come in. He wants to guide us and be with us. He said he would come into your life. He said that. God cannot lie. You can trust God in his word, and that word is in the Bible. Sometimes God is silent. We are to be told, be still, and know that I am God. Talk with him in prayer. You will know him, and that he does answer. It may not always be the answer we want to hear. Sometimes we don't get the answer we want, and we slam the door on God. Mm. But maybe he didn't answer it yet. We've turned our back before he gave us that answer. Because the answer comes in his time. All too often I hear people just closing the door on God because something happened and they didn't get a resolution to it. Mm. They shut the God out. The Bible promises eternal life to all who receive Christ. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 12 to 13, whoever has God's Son has life. Whoever does not have his Son does not have life. Pretty straightforward. I have written this to you who believe in the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. Amen. Yeah. Pray to God and thank Him often that Christ thank is you. your life and that He will <coughs> never leave you. Pray. In Hebrews 13.5, keep your lives free from the love of money. Yes, yeah. And be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. People substitute things in place of God and money is one of those things. Things that are put in place of God. Be content. Don't, don't covet after other things. God will bless us with what we need at the time we need it. Yes, he will. Be thankful and thank him every day for what you have. He says that he will never leave you. You see, you have eternal life from the moment you have received him. Stay connected. Stay connected. How do you stay connected with God? Well, there are many resources available to us today. There are three really important ways that I feel we can stay connected to God. But you can only do this after you have made the decision for Christ. First thing is to get into a Bible-believing church like ours right here. We believe what's in the Bible. Nothing else, nothing external to that. It's His Word. Get into that Bible-believing church, and as I said, don't just plug in. Open up and receive His source, receive His light. The second thing you can do, read your Bible every day. And read other books like the one I am about to refer in a few minutes. There are other sources out there that tie us right back to the Bible. That are, it's good reading. And number three, pray every day. Now, it's a discipline. Pick a time, make it a habit. Pray, and prayer is your best resource 
and his most overlooked one. You can pray all day long by just talking to him. Driving in your car, walking down the street, doing your job. Things come up. Ask him to be with you, guide you. Praying with him is really staying connected with him. Make good choices in your TV watching, your books that you read, your radio stations that you listen to. Music is a great way of connecting with God, especially great Christian music. When you put that on, you're thinking about God and not about the worldly things that some of these other songs really have out there. Yeah. Never stop learning. There's one thing I have learned is that first we must believe in the truths from the Bible. And every time I pick my Bible up and open it up, even though I've read that passage before, I still learn something yeah. new. Mm -hmm. God is talking to me and showing me. Mm -hmm. That will keep you connected to God. So staying in the Word and listening to God and praying all the time will keep you connected to God. Now, I recently attended a prayer revival meeting, and I felt the connection. It was stronger than I ever felt before. When I left that place, I was just really not only plugged in, but turned on, and I felt his power. Yeah. When I closed my eyes, I actually saw the light. Mm. Praying to him, in the darkness, the light came through. Mm. The organizer of the meeting, Jim Maxim, gave me his book titled Face to Face with God. Mm. And after reading his story, I learned how God really wants to stay connected through him, through prayer. How he wants to stay connected with us through prayer. Amen. Your partner, your spouse, your friend, whomever, you should get together every day and pray in the morning. Yes. Pray at night. Yes. Pick a devotional. Read a devotional. Devotionals are great ways of helping us understand the Word of God as they reference certain scripture and they pull it apart and all of a sudden you can see, wow, this really does apply to me today. It's how I should be living my life. Ooh. The creator of the universe sent his son Jesus to die for us so that we could know, so that he could know us in a personal way. Yes. And through his Holy Spirit, he gives us the tools to live in a connected relationship with him for all eternity. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, mm -hmm. he is faithful and to just to give and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will forgive us over and over. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life daily. Take a deep breath. And call him in. A spiritual breath. A cleansing breath. And then exhale slowly all the bad stuff that might be in your life. Confess your sins to God. That's the bad stuff that we harbor and hold in knows what they are. Mm -hmm. But if we take the time and physically take that deep breath, say, Lord, let the Holy Spirit fill me today. Yeah. You're going to be compelled to confess your shortcomings. Yeah. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It tells us to be filled with the Spirit. So you see, we need to inhale the Holy Spirit and asking God to fill us. As you've heard me say before, we need to witness every day and share the love of Christ with others. In Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, yes, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Amen. Son and the Holy Spirit. 
and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I, with, I am with you always to the end of age. To the very end of age. Yes. So you've heard us say, talk before, go out and disciple. Mm. We're going to do that today. We're going to go out on the prayer walk. Amen. Mm. The disciples here from this church are going to go out to try and touch lives. To share the good news with others. Amen, oh, Jesus. The best gift after we've received it for ourselves is that we can give others that gift by telling them about Jesus right. and we're showing them the joy of the way. Lord right. and do what it right. says right. here in Matthew 28. Right. What we need to be doing. No one should ever have to wonder about God, but many people do because they are not connected. Mm -hmm. I know there was a point in my life when I wondered about God. And I think that most everyone will come to this point in their life where they wonder about God. Yes. They think, does he really exist? What's he like? And what does he want from the people? What does he want from me? But through prayer and reading the Bible and understanding the gospel, Yes. And accepting, most importantly, and accepting the Holy Spirit into my life, things fall into place. And we have an enhanced understanding of who He is. I want to take the gospel for just a minute and talk about the gospel. And what each letter of the gospel represents. The letter G should remind us God, He created us to be with Him. The letter O, our sins is what will separate us from God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A reminder of that. The letter S, sins cannot be forgiven by doing good deeds. Amen. We must confess and ask for forgiveness. Letter P, paying the price for sin. Jesus did this for us, Hallelujah. for you, and me. And he paid the price. Thank you. Yes. Letter E, everyone who trusts in him alone and connects with him has eternal life. Yeah. Amen. Not just a select few people. Everyone. He invites everyone in. And the letter L. Life. Life with Jesus starts now. Yes. And will last forever. So get connected. Just think. As I said, God, the creator of the universe, longs for a personal relationship with you and you and you. Get connected. Establish that connection. Establish a connection with Him. Are you ready to connect and enter into this amazing relationship with God? Because it is amazing to have that relationship. And you can start a new relationship with God right now. Yes. Yeah. As I close, the Bible tells us that our heart and soul is transforming when we put our trust in Jesus. This decision to trust Christ launches us into a new relationship and connection with God. So while saying prayers daily, you are building a strong connection with God. God keeps the doors open to life-transforming relationships. Transform our, our, transform our relationship and, and give us a new life. Now I want everybody to sit there and close their eyes and pray with me from your heart. Heavenly Father, I believe in you. Man. I know I'm a sinner and I repent from my sins. I ask you to forgive me for my sins right now. 
I believe you sent your son to die in my place so that I have eternal life with you. Lord, I receive you now. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen. God bless you all.